How's it going everybody? Thanks for watching another video. Hope everybody's doing okay out there. Now as you guys know, over the past few videos, I've been trying to share some of my most scenic travel videos to try to give everybody a vacation and get away from these lockdown blues that we're under. So we're going to leave Sedona, Arizona, head on over to Moab, Utah, and check out Arches National Park. And remember guys, if you're bored and running out of things to watch here on YouTube or even on Netflix, click on my channel icon so you can check out my different videos and all my playlists that cover a variety of different topics. Welcome back everyone, Brad Akimo here with Reload Hawaii. We're in Moab, Utah, that's on the east side. On the east side. At Arches National Park, gonna be talking about some of the fantastic views I seen as a child in National Geographic waiting for my dentist appointment. And it is magnificent. They got towering monoliths spires, balanced rocks, fins, it's all there. It's all there. Go check it out. Check this out. This actually was an arch, like an M. You got sheep rock on the right. It fell. Like London bridges. Go see it before it falls like the London bridges and you'd be all like Fergalicious. I'd say the park will probably take you about an hour and a half to two hours to drive through without stopping. But that ain't gonna happen. You're gonna stop. Which leads me to my first point. When you come to a national park like this or any national park, slow it down. Time management. This park can easily keep you entertained for a week. It's gonna take care of you. So if you've allotted two hours, do three. S soak it in. Give it time to soak in. There's a there's a balanced rock there on the left, but that's not the balanced rock. There's only one balanced rock that can smell it. And there it is. That thing's gonna fall over too pretty soon. That thing's gonna go. Now, balanced rocks basically could have been an arch, and then the arch fell in, and that's what was left. Here's the windows trail. Call it the windows section. You got a high amount of arches in a very small amount of space, around five, ten minutes away from each other. So, from the parking lot to the north window arch is about five minutes. Here comes my second recommendation. If you're gonna go during the winter, time management. The days are shorter. Remember that. And I'll add to that, bring traction devices. I've seen people sliding all over the place. So you can see here on this path that it's icy. It's ice that's melted and frozen and melted and frozen, and that's what it ends up with. And you don't want to have to step on that mud there on the right side, because that mud in that Utah desert is like a... I don't know, it turns into like this never-ending story swamp of sadness mush. So you can bring like, I would say ice trekkers, the chain ones are good enough, you don't gotta get the diamond cut ones. Uh, I'm using Due North spikes, the carbide spikes. Uh, micro spikes are fine too. A little bit aggressive for what you're gonna be doing, but those will work. Yak tracks are fine too. Standard versions, the pro ones are a little bit overkill. And yeah, you're gonna bring your sunscreen and your water, and your snackies, and your backpackies. Here is the south window. So you see that mountain on the left? When you're looking at the north and south window, that mountain acts as a nose, and it separates the two archers, and it looks like a face looking at you. Some people call it the spectacles. It's creepy, though. As the sun is setting, you know, it goes from a blue sky to, like, a lavender sky to orange, and you swear that a giant, like, a, a whole head is going to come up over the mountain and start chasing you around. Or it just looks like two floating eyeballs. It's kind of eerie. Here's a turn arch. That's south of the south window arch. It's like a tower with an arch stuck to it. All of these arches you can go up to and adventure in. Check them out. But please stay on the path. They have microorganisms living in the soil there that are very fragile. If you step on them, you kill them. And they take a ridiculously long time to regenerate. And those signs are posted everywhere. And this is why you want to 
make sure you budget your time because we didn't have enough time to go across the parking lot here. So across the parking lot, this is the view from the turn arch across. We didn't have time to go look at the parade of elephants and the double arch, which is different from the double O arch. So to the left of that phallic looking thingy is the parade of elephants. And to the right of it is the double arch. When you stand in that thing and you look up, you swear to God you're in like some kind of a rocket ship launching pad thing. It's beautiful. We were, it's about 1 o'clock, 1.30, and we're trying to get to Devil's Garden before the sunset, and uh, it was rough, man. The town of Moab is pretty awesome. It's a real small town, you know. It's one of those where there's one road going down the middle, and there's shops on both sides. Tons of Holiday Inns, Hampton Inns, places for these. Oh, outhouses. Woo! So there's two stalls in each of those things. And guys and girls, make sure you don't have anything in your back pockets because once it goes in there it probably ain't going to come back out and even if it did you wouldn't want it here's one of the pluses about going during the winter one two three vehicles and that's a weekday during the winter and I'll, I will flag for you in this next portion my aha moment there's a picture of the trail so yeah Moab's pretty cool it was started by a guy that I think discovered plutonium or something like that and he bought the city he made all parking free. Oh, here is my first Lord of the Rings moment. I felt like Aragorn going down the middle, trying to get some help for a fight. Path of Dead there. But yeah, really nice little town. There's an awesome restaurant on the mountain, and it just overlooks the entire city, and you get a good look of the mountains. There I go. Everything closes early, though. I know there's a McDonald's. I think there's a, there's a Burger King. Really small town, though. As they say, it's so charming. So if you go left, you're going to go to the Landscape Arch. That's where we decided to go because we're running short on time. If you go to the right, you're going to go to the Tunnel Arch and the Pine Tree Arch. Hang a Yui, come back up, and then go back around to the Landscape Arch. But because I suck and we're running out of time, we went left. That's all we had time for. The landscape arch isn't doing so well either, and it's much like Delicate Arch. The left half of it of Delicate Arch is thinning and it's sagging. The right side of landscape arch is thinning. Well, that leads me to another point. If the question is, because a lot of people have been asking me because they knew I went up there, which hike I would do if I could only do one. Hands down, it's not even close. I would do Devil's Garden. Delicate Arch is the destination that makes it. It's, it's The money shot is outstanding, but the hike there is, is boring. You take maybe an hour and a half of slick rock, and yeah, you get to hug a mountain a little bit, a little bit dangerous, and the, like I said, the payoff is big. But the topography and the rock formations, it feels like you're on a different planet here. Do Devil's Garden. You can see that ice, whew, all kind of people on dates trying to be romantic, slipping and sliding without traction devices. I'm going to signpost this, guys. There's a trail here to my left someplace called the Primitive Trail. That's going to be important. I'll tell you why a little bit later. But from here, you get a pretty good shot of the Landscape Arch. And it's one of those that you see a lot. And that's another thing, too. The Delicate Arch is on Utah's license plate. So people are like, well, why wouldn't you want to do that? It's the most pictured arch ever. And it's the journey. The journey here is the key. And you get magnificent views of arches like this one. So there it is, Landscape Arch. It kind of looks like a golden brown crispy piece of bacon stripped between two pieces of mountain. The park ranger told me the right side is about 11 feet thick and you know, who knows, once it hits 10 and a half, it might collapse. Depending on erosion, wind, rain, sun, and the stars and the moon. I swear. Okay. Remember how I said there was a primitive trail? This is the ending of the trail if you wanted to go this way. Now, if I went the other way, I would be going down this section. Instead, I'm coming up it. I should have gone the other way. So, on to the right, there's one way you can go, and coming up this way is another way. I probably should have taken off my spikes. But let me show you what it's like when you go to the right of the screen. You go up this. And no matter which way you go, you have no idea where you're going. There's no signs. There's no giant finger pointing you, you, hey, go this way. 
And that's what they mean by primitive. It's your off trail. Right now I'm relying on people's crampon marks and footprints to think, hey, am I going in the right direction? Here's what it looks like if you were go to straight up or if you were going to go straight up that rock. And then they both meet at this point. So the double O arch, nine miles to go back around the loop, we wouldn't have made it, so we decided to go left to the Patrician Arch and the Novel Arch. Had no idea what those arches look like. So bummed didn't get to go to the double O arch. But this is the Navajo Arch. And you know, I looked at this thing, like I can see it here, and I'm like, well this thing looks like a cave. Not impressed. But like I said, but this is home to my first Legend of Zelda moment. And my first World of Warcraft moment. Whoa. And it is an arch. It's a hole in the mountain. So I remember... I think in Zelda, like when you were dying, there was like the secret area that you go to to touch like the Tree of Life and it would refill your life meter. And there it is. There's a tree in there. That's it. And for those of you that play WoW... It's like that secret golden thistle plant that you need to complete your mats to make your obsidian fire pantaloons. And this is also my aha moment. I'm going back there. I'm going to get this tree. This lonely tree standing back there all by itself. And I get there and it hits me like I'm alone out here. It's so still and so peaceful and so serene. And I turn around and I see the sunlight coming through the arch. And I'm like, wow. Thank the gods I don't have to share this with like 50, 60 other people. You know, right now the sun is not more than 30 or 40 degrees above the horizon. And I say to myself, well, what if I just let it get dark and I stay here? I might be all right with that. That's the Navajo Arch. When you're done, you're going to go back around. 10.50 minutes. Oh, both of these are 10.50 minutes from that sign. And the Patrician Arch gets my vote for, I guess, Surprise Arch. Because it, it, it was surprising. i never seen pictures of it, and it took my breath away for a couple different reasons. You can see the bushes on the bottom right of the screen just kind of blowing around. And it'll take your breath away during the winter because it's like a big, gigantic open window that's screaming like 20-degree wind at you. And you don't even realize how high off the floor you are. It is insane. I think the biggest flat screen television in the world and you can't see it because it's flat you're walking along this wall and uh you know here's the wall on the right right you can't see it and you don't notice it and it opens up so rapidly and so it's so wide it looks exactly like this i tried to get it i tried to show you guys what it looks like Oh, and by the way, this is another wow moment. Because there's a tree. There's a lonely tree right down there at the bottom of the arch. It kind of looks like a Mr. Miyagi tree. Bonsai tree from Karate Kid. Look at that, though. It's there. It's You're, you're up there. City of Moab is really great, guys. It's home to just... There was a freaking deer that crossed the road in front of me when I was on my way to McDonald's. It was crazy. There's, I tried to get a shot of that tree for you wild guys. Go make your mats. Mats. Don't forget to go out and play too, though. Here's a skyline arch, 1940. A huge boulder on the left side popped out, and it ended up looking like that. That's a 10-minute trail. That's on your way up on the right-hand side to Devil's Garden. We did that before going in, though forgot to mention skyline arch 
And then we caught the sunset. Oh, thank you so much, Moab. And here is my last Lord of the Ring moments. I felt like a hobbit on my way to the Mordor. Mordor. Well, guys, this is the ending of the video. Hey, let me know. What do you think is the best time of year to visit Moab? Winter or summer? Or which national park you like? Because I got a Zion video coming out. Or which arch is your favorite and why? Check out Balanced Rock. Well, guys, if you like the video, please subscribe to my channel. It helps me out a lot. Give me the like. Give me the thumbs up. And as always, I will catch you later.